Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be talking about VBA. Now VBA stands for Visual Basic for Applications, which as its name suggests, uh, it is a flavor of Visual Basic. Its closest relative would probably be Visual Basic 6, which is the predecessor to VB.NET, uh, back when the .NET framework came out. I still see a lot of programs that are built in VB6, and there's a lot of books and materials that you can find online for VB6. In fact, I would suggest that if you want to learn about VBA, VB6 books are a very, very good resource because of their close similarity to VBA. Now, let's go ahead and get started at VBA. First thing that I want to talk about is the way that you're going to be grouping your code. Okay, And when you're grouping your code, you are going to be trying to group it up into things called modules. Okay, Now modules are a container of code to help organize it, which may be assigned to a formal report. So when you're organizing your code, it makes sense that you want to put all that code into a particular container that all of those that those pieces of code in some way are related to one another okay and in this particular case it makes a lot of sense that let's say we have a form and we have different functions and things that we want that form to do so when we click on this or do that or the data we want to display all of that can we're gonna have VBA code in the background to do all of those things and it makes sense that we want to take all the code that does those things and put it in a module or put it in some sort of container that is associated with that particular form or report. That's just a logical way to group your code together so that it's organized and uh, easy to understand and identify where it is when you need to go to go find it and do some work on it. In your module, you're going to have functions and you're going to have subroutines. And a good way to think about how this whole module functions and subroutines relationship happens is think of, like, in a book, uh, you're going to have an author who writes several different chapters. And you can think of a chapter as a module, okay? In that particular chapter, the writer is trying to convey one particular aspect of the story. So it groups those different events of the story into that chapter. Well, that's the same that you're doing in a module. Well, functions and subroutines are like the paragraphs of that chapter, okay? In a function, you're grouping your code together, and that code is going to return a value. So when you call a function, that code is going to give you back some sort of value. Functions also provide us a way to group bits of code together so that it's easier to manage. Just like we want to group it together in a module, we also want to group it together in a function because we may want one very specific thing to happen in our code and we want to be able to identify if it breaks down we know exactly where to go to go fix it or if the user wants to add some sort of functionality to the code it's easy to go to that function and add that code to just that particular function without having to uh, search all over the place for it. The other, things that func the other thing that functions provide us is reusable code, which can be called repeatedly. There is no limit to how many times you're, you can call a function. You can just keep calling it over and over and over again. Uh, it just helps you to keep your application slimmer so you don't have to keep writing your code. That you, you know, you've got this reusable code that you want to uh, use it over and over again somewhere in your application rather than having to rewrite it every single place that you want to do it you can just refer back to the function alright so subroutines are code which is grouped together and does not return a value so subroutines and functions are almost identical the primary difference between subroutines and functions is that subroutines do not return a value whereas functions sometimes can and in, in fact whenever I code I almost do this exclusively. If I'm gonna, if I have a function that I know needs to return a value, I will write it as a function. If it's something that's not supposed to return a value back, then I write it as a subroutine. It's just the method that I've been taught, and it's the way I do it, and I think it's a good idea. Just like functions, subroutines group the bits of code together so that it's easier for you to manage. It makes your code your reusable code, uh, so that it can be called repeatedly. So 
just like with functions, you can call it over and over again to perform a particular function, and you don't have to uh, rewrite the code every single time that you want it to do something. And then last but not least, when it comes to subroutines, subroutines are the code which is performed when a form or report triggers an event. Now this is very specific to forms and reports. When you click on a button on a form, or you click on something in a report, what's going to happen is Access will recognize that you have done something on that form or on that report. And because you've done that, then Access will look to see if there's a subroutine associated with whatever it is that you did on the form or report. Okay, if there is, then it'll run that routine that you wrote, and that's just a really good way to, to do it. A good example of that would be like a close button on a form. You know, you got a button on the bottom of the form, you want the user to be able to click on that, and when they do, it closes down the form. Well, the way you handle that is that there's a event triggered when the user clicks on the button, Access recognizes that the click has happened on the button, and as a result, it will look in the background to see if there is a subroutine written for that click event. And in our case, we have a close. We tell it, close the form. So when the user clicks on the button, the event is triggered, Access looks for a subroutine, matches that click event, it's there, tells the, tells the form to close. And that's how you have an event trigger, okay? Another type of grouping of code that you're going to find is something called classes. Now this is something we're going to get into much, much further down the road, but I want you to be aware of what classes are ahead of time because you're going to see what, you're going to see classes, and you should at least know a little bit about what they are. You now classes are a module of code which outlines the behavior and properties of an object. And classes specifically pertain to object-oriented programming, okay? So if you've heard that term bantied around a little bit, that's essentially what we're getting into here with classes. I'm gonna get it, not going to get too far into it right now, but just understand a class is like, it, it's a module, which is basically an outline or a blueprint for an object that we want to make in memory. Now classes are going to have properties and methods, okay? Properties are the parts of the object that hold values for that object. So a good example of like, uh, for example, for a car. Let's say, you know, the, the, uh, the color of the car is red. The make of the car is a Dodge. The speed of the car is 60. And the, automa the automatic transmission for the car is false. In other words, it doesn't have an automatic transmission. Okay? Methods are the behavior that the object will perform. Okay, which is like turn left, right turn, drive straight, and apply brake. Okay, so these are different behaviors that the car will perform when you tell them to do it. Right, that's just an example of what you would find in a class. Like I said, we're going to get into classes much, much further down the road, but I just want you to get a general idea that you're going to have classes with properties and methods, and methods are really, really similar to functions and subroutines, and, and in fact, that's exactly how you write them. You can access the VBA code either by going up to the Design tab and clicking on the View Code of one of these forms or reports that you have in Design View. So if I put, if it responds quickly enough here. <laughs> okay, there we go. I can click on the View Code, so I'm under the Design tab, click on View Code, and that will bring up the code window, okay? The other way that you can do it is you can actually go to the Database Tools tab, and you can click on the Visual Basic button here, and that will take you to the same uh, code window.